Okay, so wouldn't it be a dream to always have a camera on you, but in a way not actually carry one? Which sounds stupid, but the iPhone or whatever phone or smartphone that you have can actually function that way. We always have one in our pockets, you know, people always carry one. So in a way, the phone camera can be one of the most inconspicuous cameras that you can use. You know, everyone has them. Um, people barely notice them because everyone is on their phones on the streets these days. And more or less in this world we live in right now, everyone pretty much has one. Everyone, come on. And usually, you know, when you review cameras or when you use a camera on a YouTube video, people are always like, yo, oh man, I can't afford that. Or people are like, oh, you're lucky because you have, I don't know, so-and-so camera. But in this case, you have to watch this video because you have a phone, period. Usually, regardless of your financial situation, you have a phone, especially if you're watching this. So today, I wanted to go through a few ways I use my phone on the street to take photos. And you know, as a photographer, and as a, especially a candid photographer, or a street photographer, whatever you want to call me, I usually have a camera on me. Like, it's usually, it's usually somewhat bigger than a phone. However, um, I do use my phone these days, especially if let's say like I'm with someone and I don't want to like slap out a gigantic camera or if the situation is kind of tight and I have my phone in my hand or I don't know you just don't feel like slapping out that gigantic camera so yeah even though I have a few cameras I still use the phone and I use nothing special I use uh, this iPhone 10 oh. again nothing fancy but this is what we're going to be using today. By the way, if you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Ulysses. I'm a photographer based in Tokyo, I guess. If you want to watch me learn as a photographer and hopefully maybe teach you some tricks, then hit subscribe. Um, it'll help me and maybe you'll enjoy my videos. Oh yes, and Merry Early Christmas, babes. Just for a quick recap, there's only a few things you can do on the iPhone camera. The first thing is zooming in and out. The next thing is tapping, which actually is focusing and metering. Some of you may actually not know this, but wherever you tap it, the phone focuses on, but also in meters for it. What this means is that where you tap, you're telling the phone to meter as 50% gray as in from 100% black to 100% white, you are telling the camera to automatically make that point that you touch the exact middle of those two polar opposites. The last thing you can do is exposure compensation. When you tap to focus in meter, you can actually drag up and down. What this does is it tells the camera to expose darker or brighter. So you can think of it this way. You can tap to focus and meter and then you can drag up or down in order to compensate for the exposure. So today I wanted to go through three ways I use the iPhone as one of my cameras effectively. I headed to central Tokyo today, so this is going to be an exciting video, isn't it? But before we actually get into the exciting stuff, here's the first way I use my phone as a camera, which isn't too exciting. The first way I use my phone camera is just for taking notes of visuals or whatever I see. Maybe not exactly the same as taking images or photos of your Starbucks latte, but the concept is pretty much similar. It's similar to a documentation, but I'm referring more to those photos where you kind of have a hunch something is good, but it's just not 100% there. Maybe the light's good or maybe everything feels in place, but nothing is really happening. So instead of using my camera, I use my phone to often document these locations so I can go back to these places to shoot something sometime else. The second way I use my phone to take pictures is to take pictures of textures, patterns, and specific moods. Let's step back just a bit and talk about the iPhone camera itself because I think this is kind of important. So I'm a photographer and I'm lucky to own a few different cameras and my general understanding of the iPhone camera is that the tiny sensor interprets images way differently than modern digital cameras. Usually this is considered a bad thing, but in my opinion, that's kind of what makes the iPhone interesting. The colors sometimes come out kind of so fake or <laughs> just so 
I don't know, blurry in a way, that it has this kind of random quality to it. And since the dynamic range is so bad, the iPhone AI tries to compensate for it. These elements make it simply a different piece from any digital camera out there. This kind of led me to the second method. I kind of feel like there's no point in trying to get the perfect image with the iPhone, whether it being like timing, as in like the decisive moment, or composition wise, just because there's so many random elements to it and it's not that fast. So trying to capture images of something more otherworldly seemed like kind of a better option to me. So in a way, I'm trying to use these faults of the iPhone to my advantage by capturing more colorful mo moments with patterns. There's kind of this, there's this soothing zen-esque essence to not having to capture things like light and color so true to life. Fake isn't bad, it's just different, and that's why it's more of a mood to me. The photos that I'm showing in method 1 and 2 are both uh, barely edited, sometimes even not edited, so hopefully this can show what is truly possible with the iPhone. The third way I use the iPhone is to take gritty black and white photographs. Kind of similar to the second method, but this tries to take advantage more of the bad dynamic range on the phone cameras. So there's more like a clear distinction between the blacks and the whites. I look for high contrast situations to scream black and white for me when I'm using this method. This way, colors being bad also doesn't really matter too much. And obviously, since the camera itself is in color, this is done in some editing. See, I have this small gripe about these people that tell you that they took all these amazing photos with their iPhone or show you these amazing, amazing photos that they took with their phone. And they might even tell you that, yo, the iPhone is the best camera that you have, or it's like, oh, I can shoot with anything. But the thing is, they are editing those photos like shit, like there's no tomorrow. See, and the problem that I have with that is that, yeah, if you, if you edit your photos with your iPhone in a similar way to, you know, how you edit your photos with your camera and you have like this big filter on it usually, then obviously, yeah, it's not, it's gonna look the same. And yeah, essentially in that case, maybe the camera doesn't matter. And the problem I have with that is that one, that's not really using the iPhone camera as an appropriate tool. That's just kind of using it and fitting it in your own style, which is not a problem, but it's just a little bit different, right? And the other issue that I find with that is that you're trying to persuade other people that the iPhone's in it iPhone is a good camera, but there's no way that that person that's watching your video or that person that you're teaching, supposedly, is gonna get a similar result as you because you're slapping a gigantic filter on the photo and that's what makes it look good. So again, going back, what I wanted to do in this video is to show a lot of photos that I barely edited with my phone or at least try to kind of demonstrate what the iPhone can do. <coughs> So now that you've taken all these amazing photographs, thanks to me in this video, what do you do with them? Do you post them on Instagram? Well, today's sponsor has an answer to that. Today's sponsor is C41. What C41 is, is they are an app where you can post photos. However, you post photos to specific competitions. And from these competitions, you can actually get some winnings or prizes from them if your photo is good enough. You can also see other people's photos um, within that competition and you can vote and comment so you can actually provide some feedback on other people's photographs. You can also see feedback that's provided to your photograph that you posted on that competition as well. I personally think it's great to have other posting options than Instagram. Although I love Instagram, it's good to actually post a photo and receive feedback but also give feedback to other people's photos as well. So again, thanks C41 for sponsoring this tiny YouTube channel. But for those of you watching, yeah, if you want, take a look and try it out yourself. Maybe you might win a prize. Okay, that concludes this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was somewhat helpful. Um, there are gajillion um, videos on YouTube about taking photos with your phone. So, I don't know, I hope I was able to give my own twist to it, and then I hope you liked some of the photos that I got from it. And these photos, you know, I actually don't really look back at them too much, they just sit in my phone. But when I was editing this video and trying to select photographs from my phone, I, I think I actually have some good photos from my phone. So this was a learning experience for me too. So I guess the lesson is, 
your phone is a viable option. It's just a different camera. So since you're going to be using it, try and learn what it can do, I guess. I hope to post at least two more videos uh, within the year. So yeah, enjoy and like and subscribe and comment, please. Okay, thank you. Bye. Sayonara. Goodbye.